Hello, and today I'm going to have a look at solving linear equations in the induction book which you're working through. This is chapter two, and it's going to be quite a long video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put links down the side, and you can click on the relevant bit. So it's broken up into solving simple linear equations, solving linear equations with brackets, solving linear equations with fractions, and forming linear equations. The first example is 64 minus 3x equals 25. The aim of solving linear equations is to get the x on its own, and we want x equals. Normally, we're aiming to get x on one side and all the numbers on the other side. So to get positive x's, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 3x to both sides. So if I do 64 minus 3x plus 3x, or my minus 3x, my plus 3x cancel each other out. And then I get 25 plus 3x, which is 25 plus 3x. Now I'm still aiming to get my 3x on its own. So what I need to do is I need to get rid of the 25. And to do that, I'm going to subtract 25 from each side. So I'm going to do 64 minus 25, and that gives me 39. And 25 plus 3x minus 25, the plus 25 and the minus 25 cancel. Now, still trying to get this x on its own, I need to get rid of the 3, because I'm multiplying by 3, I'm going to do the inverse multiply by 3, which is divide by 3, so I'll get x equals 13. Having a look at 6x plus 7 equals 5 minus 2x. Again, we're trying to get all our x's on one side, and because this is a minus, I don't like having minus x's, I'm going to add 2x to both sides. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides. 6x plus 2x is 8x, plus 7 hasn't changed. And I get 5 minus 2x plus 2x. My minus 2x and my plus 2x cancel, and I'm just left with 5. So now I've got to get rid of my 7, because again, I'm trying to get 8x on its own. I'm aiming for x on its own. So to get rid of the plus 7, I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. 8x plus 7 minus 7 leaves me with 8x. And 5 minus 7 leaves me with minus 2. And finally, to get on x on its own, I'm going to divide by 8, which is going to give me minus a quarter. Have a go at these questions. So it's just practicing the same skills we've just been doing. Pause the video, have a go at them. The next thing we're going to have a go at is solving equations with brackets. Now, sometimes there's sneaky ways of tackling these, but generally, the best thing to do is just expand the brackets. We've seen how to expand brackets before, so I'm not going to go through it. I'm going to do my 2 times my 3x, 6x. My 2 times minus 2 is minus 4, and that is equal to 20. Now, we've got to be really careful with this minus in here. This means I'm doing minus 3 times x is minus 3x. I'm doing minus 3 times plus 2 is minus 6. A typical mistake here would be to do 20 minus and then just times out by 3. So you get 3x plus 6. And you forget that the minus is involved in the 2 as well. So that's a common mistake. Don't make it. Now I'm going to carry on like I did before. I want to have x's on one side. So to get rid of the 3x on the right-hand side, I'm going to add 3x to both sides. So I get 6x plus 3x is 9x. And then I get minus 4 equals, I'm going to tidy up this side, which gives me 14. Now I want to get the 9x on its own, so I'm going to add 4 to both sides. 9x minus 4 plus 4 is 9x and 14 plus 4 is 18. So I'm just doing the same thing as both sides of my equations, keeping it the same all the way through. And now I'm going to divide by 9 to get x on its own, and I get x equals 2. Have a go at solving these equations. Again, pause the video to give yourself time to do it. Now we get on to where people start to struggle. This is solving equations with fractions. Generally, what we don't want is we don't want to have fractions in equations, and it's really good to get rid of them as soon as it's convenient. 
This first one, y over 2 plus 5 equals 11, I'm going to do slightly differently to the induction booklet because I'm aiming to get y on its own. It's easy for me to get rid of a plus 5. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. When I subtract 5 from the left-hand side, the plus 5 and the minus 5 cancel. When I subtract 5 from the right-hand side, I get 6. Now I need to get rid of the divide by 2, and I'm going to multiply through by 2, which gives me 12. The induction booklet multiplies everything by 2 to start off with to get rid of the fractions, and that's a perfectly good way to do it as well. The second one, a third bracket, 2x plus 1 equals 5. We want to get rid of the fraction, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to times by 3, because my times by 3 will cancel with my times a third. That gives me 2x plus 1 on my left-hand side and 15 on my right-hand side. And now I just subtract 1 from each side. I get 2x equals 14 and divide through by 2. The next two examples are slightly more complicated. To get rid of the fractions, what we're looking for is the lowest common denominator, the lowest number which is in both times tables. So if I have a look at my 4 and my 5, the lowest common denominator is 20. There's no number before 20 which is in the 4 times table and the 5 times table. So when I multiply 3 by 20, I'm going to get, well, looking at this first fraction, I'm timesing by 20 and dividing by 4. That's the same as multiplying by 5. So I'm going to say I've got 5 times my first bracket. Look at my second fraction. I'm timesing by 20, but I'm dividing by 5. And that's the same thing as multiplying by 4. So I'm going to get plus 4 times my second bracket. And then on the right-hand side, I get 2 times 20 is 40. Now, just like before, we've got an equation with brackets in. Just like we were practicing earlier, we're going to expand our brackets. That's going to give me 5x plus 5 plus 4x plus 8. Now, at this stage, we've got all our x's on one side, but they're separated out. So I'm going to collect my like terms. I'm just going to say 5x plus 4x is 9x, and 5 plus 8 is 13. And that is equal to 40. So I get 9x equals, subtract 13 from both sides, and I get 27. And now I'm going to divide through by 9, and that gives me x equals 3. Again, here we have a question with fractions. I could multiply 3 by 24, because that's 4 times 6, and that would cancel my 4 and my 6. But I'm a mathematician. I like to make things as easy on myself as I can, because I'm lazy. So rather than having big numbers, I like small numbers. So rather than just multiply 3 by 24 straight away, I'm going to think about what other number I could times through by and cancel my 4 and my 6. So I need a number in the 4 times table and the 6 times table. And what I'm actually looking for is the lowest common multiple of 4 and 6. And that's 12, because 12 is 3 times 4 and it's 2 times 6. So I can multiply 3 by 12 and cancel my 4 and my 6. So when I times 3 by 12, I'll get 12x plus, and now I'm going to get x minus 2 divided by 4 times 12. That's the same as 3 times x minus 2. And then I come to my right-hand side. 2 times 12 is 24. Minus is still there. And now I get 3 minus 5x divided by 6 times 12. Well, dividing by 6 and times in by 12 is the same as times in by 2. And then we get our 3 minus 5x. Again, we don't like having brackets, so let's expand our brackets. I get 12x, and now I get plus 3 times x is plus 3x. Plus 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. On the right-hand side, I get 24. Now I get minus 2 times plus 3. Well, that's minus 6. Minus 2 times minus 5x. Well, my minus and my minus make a plus, so this becomes plus 10x. Again, be really careful with minus signs. So easy to make careless mistakes. Now I'm going to collect all my x's on one side. Before we do that, let's just tidy this up a little bit. So 12x plus 3x is 15x minus 6, and that is equal to 24 minus 6 is 18 plus 10x. 
Now I can collect for all my x on one side, so I'm going to get 5x equals 24. So x is going to equal 24 over 5. I'm quite happy to leave it as a fraction. You can cancel it down, of course, and write it as a decimal, which is going to be 4.8. I'd probably rather you left it as a fraction, to be honest. But it depends how reliant you are on your calculator. Have a go at these questions. Remember, to get rid of fractions, you want to be multiplying through by the lowest common multiple of the denominators of the fractions. Pause the video so you've got time to do it. Now we get on to the last section, which is the worded questions. The example says, find three consecutive numbers so that their sum is 96. We've got lots of words here. The key ones are three, so I'm looking for three numbers. They are consecutive numbers. And what that means is they come in order. So like 5, 6, 7, or 13, 14, 15. There's no gaps between them. So that their sum, well, we know that the sum means adding up, is 96. You've got to get used to worded questions and taking information out of worded questions at A level. You can't escape it, and the worded questions you'll meet are far more complicated than this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say my first number is n, but if my first number's n, then my second number is the next number after n, so I'm going to say n plus 1. So if n was 3, n plus 1 would be 4, and then to get my third number, I'm going to do n plus 2. And I know that the sum of these three consecutive numbers is 96. So I can say n plus n plus 1 plus n plus 2 is equal to 96. Now I'm going to collect my like terms together. So I've got n plus n plus n is three lots of n. 1 plus 2 is 3. And now I'm going to solve the equation like before. So I'm going to take away 3 from both sides, and then I'm going to divide by 3. So the key thing is extracting the information from a question and using a variable to form an equation. Have a go at these three questions. Again, pause the video so you've got time to do it. And I hope you've done that because I'm going to show you the answers to all the questions from the exercises from this section. So I hope that's been helpful to you. And I hope now you're really confident with solving linear equations because then you'll be far best placed to do simultaneous equations and quadratic equations and all the future things we'll be doing in A-level. I hope you enjoy the rest of your summer. And good luck doing your A-levels.